Hi there. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, my process for doing a more complex illustration. So this one has uh, multiple characters. He has like some staging, like it's some storytelling uh, to the to the pictures. He has a background and uh, full lighting. Uh, also, like in my head, I have kind of a precise uh, way I want to render it. So uh, I want different treatment for the background and uh, the characters, uh, like animated uh, cartoons like Disney or Ghibli. Uh, animated cartoons, so you have the background that's more painted and the character are like with the black uh, line drawing and a more flat uh, coloring and shade. So the first step is to get the picture you want. Uh, the picture you have in your head might take multiple sketch, like this one I did actually did, uh, a couple of sketch for the, the cats first and once I have one I like it, I like to just do the background behind. And then I work on the, the shadow, what lighting I want to just get the picture of in my head and get a precise idea of what I want to do. So then I just need to focus on the execution uh, to make it look good. And make sure like here, yeah, make sure that my lighting uh, look nice, the composition look nice, I have a more dark uh, foreground, a more light background. And uh, some kind of a diagonal going on with the characters and the light. So it's a more interesting composition. I want some map you with that. I'm gonna pass. Uh, I'm gonna start with the, the cleanup. So the idea of the cleanup here, I'm starting with the perspective. I have a tool that's called, uh, you can see it there, uh, Lazy uh, <laughs> Lazy Meal Pro. So it's uh, something that helps you to clean light, uh, clean uh, lines. And here's some option, and this one is a fish eye perspective uh, drawing option. So that's really good. It lets you just draw in the perspective. Everything you draw is following your perspective line. So you just set your perspective and just draw on it. So if you're like me and you hate doing perspective and you're really bad at it, it is your best friend. Uh, I would recommend to redraw it after because it's really uh, like architecture looking, really industrial. Uh, Look, look to it, so yeah. But it's nice to get your background, like your sketch there, and then you can just draw, you don't have to worry about doing a good perspective or anything, you just need to worry about the lines. Uh, now I'm doing my pass on actually uh, drawing the characters. It's not the inking pass yet, I just want to make sure I have the right uh, anatomy, the right perspective, and something that works that's uh, solid, because it's going to be a fairly long drawing to make. And I want the, line, uh, the original uh, drawing part to be actually good. Uh, so here I took a uh, reference of my uh, cat. It's always good if you have uh, an animal uh, so you can get the actual right perspective. I originally tried to find it on like Google or something, but I couldn't get the exact perspective on it. So I just got my cat to, uh, to pose for me. And uh, yeah, after that, like the, the character is uh, anthropomorphic, so is like human and animal at the same time. I really wanted like it's a bit like Zootopia, so I wanted to get the the hand looking like cat hand, but yeah, they could get poses from human. So I get a, a term that cat. They have one, but not that long. So I extend that one, get the fingers more defined. So it gets really, uh, you still get the cat feeling of the round fingers and kind of the anatomy, how the knuckle uh, line up and all that stuff, but they still, uh, they can take like human poses. Uh, so that's nice. I've, uh, I did some research for that character before, so I don't, I'm not making it up uh, on the fly there. I have actually a design for it, uh, for all the, the kittens too, so just posing and making sure that my anatomy and my perspective is correct on it. Uh, but I would recommend that if you have like a big picture like that and you want to say a story and multiple characters just to actually sketch your character before, like front view, side view, or any any view that represents them, any activity that represents them. Uh, that's, uh, that's way better. And uh, 
And yeah, after that, once you do the illustration, you just have to worry about the posing and the perspective. Uh, this one, I find like doing a camera looking down or looking up it really helps getting like more dynamic. Um, overall, better looking drawing. It's the magic trick. If you never find your drawing is a bit boring, even though you tried your best, the anatomy is correct and all that stuff, just try to raise the camera or uh, lower it. And it helps quite a lot. And yeah, for the kitten, it's the different part. You really want to get the cuteness, get a big, big head and a big forehead. For cats in general, they can have big forehead, but for any kid-looking uh, character, just get the forehead there, like the big eyes, the small nose. Yeah, I really got the nozzle, uh, nozzle to be a bit uh, smaller. And then, like, uh, I did the, the arms a bit longer, just because they need to act with them, and uh, I have such a big head that the arm needs to be able to go around the head and still show. But then uh, the rest of the body is really small, the tail is uh, super short. And uh, yeah, the, the legs are really, really short. And yeah, after that, just really use reference and draw a lot of whatever you, you're drawing, like here, like it's cat, so I need to draw them three quarters back, front, top, like any different perspective and different expression as well. Like this uh, little uh, kitten is my, uh, he's my favorite there. Uh, he's just like silly and he's often like, the most, uh, most expressive. I, you want expression like that you can relate as as a human, but also that fits in the cat anatomy. So we really keep the the shape of the mouth um, to it as a, as a cat, and the eyes too, and the eyebrows. For the eyebrows, I found for animals, I often draw them like that. And like for dogs and cats, it works really well to get some kind of circle there. If you have a I have a dog and he really has that, and I actually have a spot there. I think that uh, maybe German Shepherd have them, but uh, Rottweiler and Doberman, they really have that actual spot uh, on their eyebrows and that stuff that move and give them a lot of expression without human eyebrows. So it's got my uh, go-to for animal eyebrows, the wrong thing. And then for open mouth like that, I just reference a lot of drawing for uh, Chris Sanders, like Get a bit stitchy as a uh, Ogo, which is a cat uh, he draws, and it's really like, this one is really close to to Ogo, and I think it's just so cute and so appealing the way it does open mouth, and also try to get the teeth uh, and tongue in perspective. Mostly the teeth to get an arc there, so it's not stuck to the lips, but actually following the jawline inside the inside the mouth it does add a lot of uh, perspective there. And yeah, you can see the personality of the cats, like the, the shy one, and the more extra laughing one, funny one, all that stuff. Now here I'm doing my pass on uh, on lighting, so it's just for the background because I know like I'm gonna paint the background, but the cats are gonna be actually uh, more to be. And so I use a really textured brush to get that yeah that painted effect. Uh, since I drew the perspective like really, uh, well, really in straight line, I want to get the texture and the more painted effect with uh, with actual texture on the brush. Mm. That part like can go really fast once you have your, your reference on your first sketch. Just put it at the right place. Just be careful to have a nice, nice shape drawn uh, by the the shade and they all make sense yeah, in the perspective and with the light you have. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going more detail once uh, I do all the lights down like uh, flat lights uh, I can do more a uh, gradient like the one around the fire is more a gradient one. 
and I'm just assuming it added the, the detail of object. Uh, my goal here is to be able to remove the lines uh, after. So you really want to make sure every information you add with the lines, you translate it uh, with, uh, with the shadow. And working black and white like that really allows you to focus uh, on that, on the values, make sure like all your uh, painting is clear and it's balanced and uh, the composition is nice and all you shade makes sense. And once that's uh, working, then adding the colors is really, really easy and you can just focus on getting the color you want. So here you can see me uh, toggling uh, on and off the, uh, line, uh, the line layer and just adding whatever information I'm losing every time I'm toggling it off. So adding a light, adding uh, extra shadow. I'm just working to see why it works the best. And it doesn't have to be like super physically accurate as long as it conveys the, uh, the thing you have in mind like, to, to get the right texture or the right material. Like those one I'm imagining in there, like maybe in uh, copper. And I want the wood to look like wood. And like the stuff, it would be under the, the wood there, under the fire. It's some kind of sand thing, so I just leave it super smooth. And I'm gonna add some more detail in there, some detail there. But it's still, you see, it's not, it's not stored or anything. It's more smooth material. And it also adds some graphic, interesting element. It's not just pure physics. And yeah, here I'm controlling probably the highlight in the front of the teapot is not realistic, but it helps defining the, the exact shape and it still looks nice. Uh, the pillow are losing a lot when I um, erase the lines, so I'm just trying to get the same 3D aspect out to them. And yeah, don't hesitate to use a lasso tool to just take one element on the layer and really work on that one. And the table there I'm trying to get, because I added the shadow right compared to the, the light window, but the, the value wasn't great, it was not popping as much as before, so I really want to feel that the table is like maybe a dark brown or actually a black table. And I'm just adding all the detail on that uh, table because that's, uh, that's really the place of the room like, where there is the most uh, detail. So I want to focus on it. Uh, that cat is actually the inspiration for the main character. It's like the lucky cat uh, in, uh, in Japan. are like those uh, white and two-tone uh, spot, uh, spotted cat. So that's why I wanted to put it there so you can see where the character design come from. And just detailing all the little uh, Japanese looking accessories there. And yeah, I wanted to add some uh, some fabrics uh, on the back there. So I could have drawn it, but it would take quite a while. And this is actually a research from my book, it's not an actual page for it. So I just took an image I found on, on Google and find the one that was fitting the best uh, with my uh, with my image, with the idea I wanted. I'll just put it there because it adds detail and it's fast. Um, obviously it works. I just took some uh, shadow. I was missing the shadow of the of the smoke and uh, and yeah, the little uh, call them doorknob, probably not that. Um, but yeah, the idea on that one is like they're all the same, so I'm just gonna work on one and then just copy paste it uh, on the other ones. Yeah, also keep toggling the line uh, layer on and off to see uh, when you have enough information and then scaling them to fit the perspective. Because the top one are a bit bigger than the bottom one. You don't feel it, but it actually yeah, helps it. Here again, I uh, take the layer of my uh, wardrobe and I'm like 
from a, a drawer. And I'm like, yeah, I want the drawer to be darker than the main body of the of the furniture. But it really adds detail, even though you don't do anything. You just and here I'll do the same thing. Like uh, basically, I'll have all those elements in one layer. I want to make sure they're like distinct elements, so I don't want them to be too contrasted because they're still in the same place in space and not that important. But I want them to be different enough so you you feel the detail. Even though it's just like three books and uh, two folded uh, clothes. So it just really populates the scene with like simple, simple stuff. And now for the fun part, the inking. So yeah, the ink is, you just need to practice at the end of the day, sadly. Um, if you want help because you have hard time getting straight lines and clean line, uh, try like the, the tool, like I said, uh, the Lazy uh, Nezumi Pro. It also has an option that smooths your line if you want it. For this one, I didn't actually use it because uh, uh, I got the new uh, Photoshop CC. Actually, way cleaner for lines than uh, at CS5 before. He has a bug on uh, if you draw slowly, it does weird stuff with your line, like some kind of pixelation or something. So I just did, uh, I used to uh, use the lazy uh, Nesmi tool a lot, but on, uh, on CC actually the bug is gone, so you can draw smoothly uh, with no problem, and as slow as you want. So here it's like speed up 10 times, so you can imagine it's way slower uh, when actually drawing, and that's, that's the important part. Uh, to get those lines, because those lines are gonna stay in my illustration and they are giving the volume of the cats. Um, and the cats are gonna have the shading, uh, but really simple uh, shading and flat color, so the main thing that brings them volume is the, the drawing, so you want them to be nice. And the main thing to give volume there is uh, the, the variation of the, obviously the perspective, like to get the, the thing to roll over, uh, really get uh, all the elements overlapping and, uh, and a good, yeah, good perspective on it. Uh, but also the thickness of the line. So I'm always like starting with the contour line, and, like more thick, and, uh, and then inside you do uh, thinner lines, just and less, uh, more sketchy line inside. So you get really the, the contour nice, clean, and clear. And then inside you just go more smoothly, and all the fur too. I don't want it to be uh, to be rigid, so really more sketchy, really lighter lines, and not necessarily finish line. Uh, since I'm gonna color it myself, then I don't have to worry about finishing the line absolutely. I can have holes in them, and it's, it's fine. It's more important that the drawing looks alive than you have some perfect contour to it. And one, one thing I find, like, if ever you have a problem with that, I used to have a lot of problem, like my sketch look, you know, really alive, really nice, and then I start to do the cleanup, and all of a sudden it would look dead. And the, the, thi the thing I find that helped me is like a kind of a mental trick. Uh, it's basically to always try to add something. Every single pass you do, from the original sketch to the cleaner to the inking, try to add element to it so you still innovate and draw your jobs. You don't trace, you still try to add stuff. So on the inking, you really want to focus uh, on exact shape of things, on the thickness of your line, on getting uh, yeah, everything you, you like, make sure to don't know, uh, how the line ends, how they overlap, uh, to have no tangents and uh, stuff like that. That's the thing I focus on um, at the past. So that keeps me in the creative uh, mode in my head and so I don't, uh, don't actually trace uh, my old drawing, but I actually draw based on it. So it, it makes a difference. I don't know if you ever had that issue, but yeah, it really helps. And uh, yeah, here, like I said, I'm just going to do the, the flat colors. 
you can do it with the lasso tool here I just painted it because yeah my line the control line was not super clean so I want to make sure that my color application was extremely clean on the on the outline so I just actually drew it uh, but if not lasso tool works too uh, if you have a clean line you can use the one I actually followed the line or contours, it works really well. It's, it's a bit faster, so. But yeah, I'd like fairly uh, small area, but a lot of different uh, layers of colors. So yeah, I think it would make a big difference. And you can see all my reference now, like all the original sketches I did uh, for the, those characters. So once you have those, you just need to apply them. That's the boring part of drawing. Just making all the layers with all the different colors you want, uh, but it's, it does help for the rest of the illustration. It's, I cannot not do that. It does has a huge impact of the overall quality of your of your drawing. So you know, just bear with it and do the cleanup and all the color in different layers and make them clean and nice. And at least do some naming on the layers. Yeah, I didn't name all of them, but I named the, the main one that I use as a mask with a uh, temporary name for the for the kitten. Yeah. So I know which one is what, and uh, I don't have to unhide them for half an hour to see which one is the right one. Uh, here I'm going to do the, the light and shadow, so what I do, I do one I multiply layer over everything to make the shadow and then actually paint in the light. Uh, I find it helps you to get way more way more realistic uh, look at the end, because yeah, well, if you just do everything light and then you start adding the shadow, you might be shy to add as much shadow, like maybe you wouldn't get the all cat face in shade and stuff like that, but if you put everything in shade then you just think of where the light comes from and what it would touch and what it would not then you get way more like you get the volume way better and you would get it like, yeah done way better than if you have done the opposite for that one anyway, I guess if you have something with a softer lighting maybe I would go everything in light and then just do the shadow on the small place where there is some shadow, like if you have overcast day and it's an outdoor then maybe yeah, the, the shadow is not that extreme so you won't need to do that but for this one I wanted a kind of uh, really harsh uh, shade uh, here I'm doing the highlight, like uh, fairly saturated uh, path so I do first just painting every place I want it and then erasing so it's more subtle or you want to get the, the warmth of the ear with the sun coming through and it really adds some uh, some life to them. Uh, here uh, you see I'm going through all my layers of, uh, of colors for every cat. That's why I would, uh, if I redo it, I would do only one layer for all the cats uh, per color. So I'm just adjusting the, the purple and the orange. So it looks better. Just uh, I like the, the color better now. Then the, uh, the purple was a bit too uh, light. A little bit too saturated, so it's a bit more grey. Because the idea, like, it's supposed to be really thick. I make it purple just so, because I don't like brown, brown, but I still want it to be kind of a realistic color for a cat. Uh, here I'm adding the, um, the the small shadow details that are like a bit more dark than the overall shadow. just to get the volume in, in the shade, so they're not so flat. That's the part that breaks a bit from my uh, direction of doing really like uh, like animated cartoon, but I find uh, the background has so much volume that you can only need to add it in there.
Yeah, I'm just adjusting some detail now. And I use the texture brush, but I'm coming back in the kitten to smooth the texture a bit, just because they are so small and it's also a bit too, uh, too messy. I still want them to be really readable, so I try to clean it as much as I can so you can really feel uh, the volume of the wheel part. Uh, so now I'm coloring the background uh, using uh, color layers. I can do it both ways, either color layers or multiple layer. Just try whichever works the best for you, uh, depending how well you manage to do your uh, your gray uh, path. Uh, but yeah, just trying to find out what kind of uh, color I want. I already had kind of an idea in head in my head, like something around the brown, and then get the tatami maybe more greenish and. Uh, and the yellow color and some red for uh, for the furniture and the background, like some heightened color. So I'm just trying to put the color I want everywhere. And then I'm just gonna adjust because I don't want them to be monochrome either. Especially some layer have like more than one thing, like all the, the pot and the the teapot and the rice pot and the fire stuff are probably need to uh, cut the big different uh, tones so they don't look like they're one material. And same thing with the table there, I have a lot of uh, stuff that are all in the same layer, so I don't want them to be one color. Same thing for that furniture. Uh, like in the gray uh, pass, I did. I did want to separate the, the drawers from the main, uh, uh, the main body of the furniture, and I want to do something in the color. So there, I use the gradient map. So basically, gra gradient map it gives you the ability to replace the white and the black with the color, and then it does all the gradient in between. You can also add color in between. So there, I just push to get uh, the darkest part to be more red and the uh, and the lightest part to be uh, more brown and really push the gray to make sure I have the right shade at the right place so all my drawers are red and the rest is brown. It's, it's a fun tool, uh, I think it's really nice if you find that your stuff looks a bit weird, like the colors look a bit weird. Uh, if uh, with just a color layer, then try the gradient map, it just gives you a different uh, effect on it. It does color the, the gray, but uh, in a different way, so I'll try it out if you have some problem. So I'm doing a lot of back, back and forth there, and the idea is really to get the, the full image to look nice, so I'm just trying out colors. I really don't want it to feel like it's uh, colorized black and uh, and white picture, so really working to get a lot of variety in uh, color scheme. And yeah, using the selection tool, you can also, like, if you have one layer that, like, you, you draw a bit too much stuff in the same layer, then just uh, select one part of it to change the color a bit so it's not that on the chromatic on all, uh, all of that one layer. Here I'm using an uh, adjustment uh, mask, an adjustment layer, too. And it also has some uh, special movie setting, it's really nice. Just to add the overall layer on top of everything and then erase some place that you liked it better before. So there I used it to get a nice brown, like yellowish color and then I erased the, sh the shades so they are a bit more blue. Uh, here I had some, uh, uh, some perspective uh, mist, probably has another name, uh, but I don't get it right now. Um, so the idea is to uh, get the background to stay in the back, so you put a layer that's like not a lot of uh, 
like uh, a really transparent layer with some like uh, yeah I choose the color of the light so like the, the yellowish uh, white and it gets some kind of atmospheric perspective uh, into the room so the background really stay in the back and the foreground really pop forward um, yeah yeah working on on this bit Yeah, I see I'm erasing a bit the, uh, the adjustment layer, so I'll keep my sh shadow a bit more blue, so everything is not orange. That's not what I'm looking for either, I like the orange, but I still want two tones. So you get to some warm tone and some cooler tone to really get the light and the, and the sh shadow. Yeah, just in some color again, because I find a bit too merging with the background and some uh, in overlay layer just uh, adding some saturation uh, I find the best place for the saturation look the best uh, is to pop it up on the edge of the shadow so you find every place where the shadow meets the light and you can just pop some saturated area it really adds to the picture without having to saturate everything and yeah, then again, just added the other layer on top, like changing some some situations, using some colors, just to get exactly what you want at the end. That's the fun part, like the polish part, once everything is figured out, and just try stuff. Like add layer, and don't hesitate to erase to really keep the volume. And yeah, at the end there, I did the... Um, I did the last pass with the brush uh, just to add some kind of a less clean uh, rendering like if it was uh, painted so you would have the frame you see in the movie and then around it is the place that was masked by a scotch tape or something and yeah, uh, like, I made the illusion that yeah, you, they painted the whole background and then they drew on top of it and everything is not there so if you have a lot of uh, rusty note of art book or, um, or yeah actual original uh, frame you can see like what's outside of the frame of the camera is actually more rough I kind of like the illusion that it's yeah, a rough frame of a movie so I hope that helps you if you have any question put me up I can explain to you I really wanted to uh, talk about the process in that one and uh, yeah see you next time